No such thing as mistakes, kids. No, the night. I love the underwater look. It's so dreamy, it's fun, and some of my favorite photos have used the technique. Recently, I finally got the opportunity to shoot my own photos and videos underwater. And you know, I'd love to stand here and tell you that shooting underwater is fun, easy, breezy, and you can do it all with this one special trick. But no, not at all. As I came to find out, shooting underwater is extremely difficult. I watched so many videos about underwater shoots where everyone was just laughing and dancing and having a good time all under the sun, and I thought it was gonna be the same for me. But guess what? False. I was basically voluntarily drowning for an hour straight. So today, I'm gonna talk to you about some of the things that I thought I did right on my shoot, and tell you a little bit more of the things that I wish I did. So if you wanna try this out on your own, you can do it a lot better than me. So, let's dive in. Hmm. For this shoot, my main source of light was a Leco light pointed directly at the water. Hard light from water sources works wonders since I knew the water was going to displace and reflect a lot of the light on its own. Direct light also really highlights the ray effect when shooting in water that you normally wouldn't get with a soft source. If you need a good fill light, try out using an Aperture ALMW. They're little waterproof pocket LEDs that pack a great punch when you need to fill in the details of your subject. Now I thought the water was going to slow down the camera's movement, and while it did a little bit, it was hard to keep straight. You don't have gravity to help you keep your camera level. So I chose to shoot in 120 frames per second so the slowdown footage will be stable. It also extended the length of my usable footage. Since every shot only lasted about 10 seconds, when you shoot in a high frame rate, you can turn that 10 second real time clip into a 30 second clip just by converting it to 24 frames per second. <laughs> Now when you got a camera housing that contains air, it's going to float, as air does. Also, fun fact, human bodies containing air tend to float as well. If you try to sink down into the water unaided, you're going to be spending more of your time fighting against nature instead of focusing on your shot. If you buy a little 5 pound weight and put it in your pocket, you'll be able to sink down in the water without releasing your breath, while still being able to tread water. But I will warn you, it will tire you out a little bit more because, you know, it's gonna weigh you down in the water. You're gonna be spending more energy treading up. And that concludes what I did right. Now, on to the things I did wrong. Our underwater camera housing was, to put it lightly, a nightmare. Now, I usually don't trash gear that often, but God, my patience ran really thin on this one. For some completely nonsensical reason, they decided that hex screws would be the best way to seal the o-ring, making it waterproof. You know what doesn't go well together? Large bodies of water and tiny little screws. God forbid you drop one of them in the pool drain while swapping out batteries. The buttons on the outside didn't connect to the camera properly either, which made shooting and adjusting settings a complete ordeal. And to put the cherry on top of this urinal cake, I found out that it leaked and let in water when I disassembled it. Fun times. If you were going to rent or buy an underwater housing for your camera, I highly recommend getting one with buckle clasps. They're really easy to put together, and it's the type that some of our pro underwater contributors for Shutterstock use in the field. Make sure you and your talent have clear and complete communication when it comes to your vision. You can't give directions underwater. Here, try this little experiment at home. Just take a bucket of water, submerge your head in it, and try talking. You see, it's just not that practical. You and your talent need to talk about every move and what you would like to see before you go under. There's really no way to signal that you would like a change while submerged, you know, with the lack of oxygen and everything. Surprising, but your body doesn't like being underwater, so it's kind of hard to get comfortable down there. One of the most frustrating parts about this shoot is that every time that we would go underwater, I'd line up the perfect shot after about seven or eight seconds and then get the immediate need to go above water. I'd shoot up and then I'd lose the shot. I think a big reason that we were having trouble is because we were shooting in 10 foot deep water. You can always shoot in a shallow pool so you don't feel like you're drowning constantly. That way you can put your feet on the ground and if you need to shoot up for air, you can just use your legs to pop up. Or you can get a snorkel, that could work. Or you could learn to breathe underwater. That's preferable. Due to venue constraints, we only had about an hour and a half in the water. 
I thought this would be plenty of time, but I kind of forgot that going underwater and being underwater is extremely tiring and taxing on your body. Both me and our model Heather would go down about twice or three times, and then we'd have to take like a five or 10 minute break just because we were just so exhausted from being underwater that whole time. Handling that camera was tough, but she was in a full fabric dress, which drags you down and makes it really hard to swim. Just to make sure I didn't kill my talent, we took five to 10 minute breaks, which is okay, but it ate up a lot of our time. So maybe take about four or five hours to get your shoot done so you can take, you know, 30 minute breaks and rest up so you can be ready while you're underwater. You know, with all that said and all my complaining, we still got some really cool photos and videos out of it. Funny thing is, some of my favorite photos that I took were above water. Now guys, I've shot in the mountains, I've shot on planes, I've shot on active runways, and I've always been comfortable behind the camera. But this was truly the first time that I felt really helpless and completely out of my element. It's a completely different world underwater with time limits and quick thinking. It's not like the studio where you have time to frame a shot and be prepared. I really thought that I planned this shoot to the best of my ability, but like Mike Tyson famously said, everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the mouth. One of the best things I learned about this shoot was not about underwater photography, but just getting out of your comfort zone. You gotta get knocked down hard by something that you think you're gonna be good at to realize that there's plenty more to learn in both your life and career. Failing is good sometimes because it teaches you just to keep learning and keep taking chances. It might not work the first time, but hey, it's like jumping off a diving board. Sometimes you just gotta do it and then get resuscitated after falling flat on your face. So if you're thinking about going out there and trying your hand at taming the open waters with a camera in your hand, heed my warnings and take your time. It might be tough, but hey, with enough patience and strong enough lungs, you might capture your favorite image yet. If you've ever shot underwater and have any tips for us, please write in the comments and let us know because we'd honestly love to see them. Anyway, like, sub, share, don't drown, and we'll see you next time.